back in the 19th century, several times people walked into St Paul's and swept the candles and communion vessels off the altar onto the floor because they disagreed with the ritual that was taking place. Uh, some people went to prison for that kind of thing, but there was very little impact on the rest of society. Whereas now we're in a situation where, because of its views about women and about gay people, the church has been seen as toxic or oppressive. And that breaks my heart that that should be the case, when the church is there to bear witness to freedom, life and hope in the world. And let's see what we can do to change that. I grew up in a conservative evangelical church and had a traditional view about the nature of sexuality. And then I was asked to do some work about 1997, 1998, something like that, when the Church of England was discussing its first report on issues in human sexuality. And as part of that, I organised a conference which would bring together Christians from different points of view. And at that conference, there were three people who were gay Christians who were coming out and talking about what their experience was like. And I sat there listening to what they were saying, saying in my head, this is very interesting, and saying in my heart, I don't want to hear this, because if I listen to this and take it seriously, that these are brothers in Christ who are having a different kind of experience from me, then I've got to think about changing my mind and finding out that what I believed in the past really doesn't fit the reality of what's around me. And since then, I've been listening and trying to understand more about how it is to be Christian and to have a positive understanding of sexuality, both as a heterosexual and also for gay people, and actually what that means. And this whole process for me is about helping the church more broadly, not necessarily to change its mind, but to bring its understanding into line with the reality of what gay people so often experience inside and outside the church. So what about people who believe that what the Bible says on homosexuality is the Bible truth and should be adhered to? I respect that point of view and the Bible has... I always have a problem with people who say the Bible says because that undercuts the whole process of interpretation and working together to understand actually what it is the Bible says. The Bible says many things, including loving your neighbour as yourself. And I wonder sometimes how good we are at that. And I've met people who have a conservative view and yet are full of love for people who are different from them. And I respect that wholly and absolutely. Um, what worries me so often is the way that the church as an institution and some people as individuals seem to forget that love and understanding, as well as challenge, are part of the Christian gospel. I'm going to talk about the need to be both inclusive and challenging, because God's love challenges all of us, whether we're heterosexual or homosexual, about how are we actually fulfilling the will of God. And what are the consequences of the church's um, attitude towards, existing attitude towards gays? Yes, I, I've known one or two people that you and I know of a lot more who simply can't cope with the pressure of what it means to be told that what you feel you are uh, is wrong, that you as a person are not right in some way. And however we work it through, and I think you know, what, what I want to try and encourage is the working towards the idea of what good disagreement actually means in practice. Whatever it means, it must include the possibility for Christian gay people to be at peace with themselves before God and before one another. And some of what I see is Christian gay people trying very hard to live in accordance with traditional understandings of gay sexuality and finding it impossible to accept themselves in that process and the damage it can do to them. And, and finally, if the church doesn't find a way to live in dis good disagreement, if the people say, well, we've been doing this for 2,000 years, why should we change now? If, if that continues, what do you think the consequences could be? I guess the consequences could be similar to that which we've experienced about the ordination of women and women's leadership, that there are some who will say, we just can't be part of this. Uh, there are others who say, we want to be able to live together in creative tension. Uh, I think the more who are prepared to live together even though we disagree, 
but can do it well, which is what the church is asking or seeking for, uh, is, a, is a better witness to the world about the nature of Christian love. But I don't think we should be tearing each other apart because that's not much of a witness to the love of Christ either.